Okay, guys, I'm back again today bringing you even better Big Navi news uh, brought to you by... I'm using a bunch of B words here and I'm running out of them, but the point is, this is big news. And we're talking ray tracing benchmarks have been leaked for Big Navi. And um, so, first of all, the source here is a editor at, what is it, Unico's Hardware, I believe. Um, and he has leaked us both some synthetic benchmarks in 3D Mark Time Spy, which is ray tracing enabled, as well as some gaming benchmarks in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. All right, guys, as we've seen in my last video yesterday, which is going strong, by the way, thank you guys, everybody who's watched that, liked it, subscribed to it, all of that, thank you guys. I've been doing this YouTube thing for like a barely, not even quite a month now, and um, it's been a lot of fun, and it's been really, really cool seeing some success, getting some videos with some views. Thank you guys so much. Anyway, in that video, we've seen that the AMD cards are really, really looking strong um, in normal rasterized performance, and... Um, the big question, if I look at through those comment section, if there's anybody in there defending a, uh, defending NVIDIA, uh, their biggest point, which I have totally agreed with, is, yeah, but what about ray tracing? Because I know not everybody cares about ray tracing, but uh, as newer games come out, ray tracing is going to be a bigger and bigger deal. It's going to be in more games and all of that. So that's the big question mark. Uh, it was a little bit concerning that we didn't see a whole bunch of uh, ray tracing information in the Big Navi reveal. Um, that raised a lot of question marks on, okay, so can they compete with NVIDIA? And most people think they can't. Well, we still don't have the full picture today, but we do finally have some actual benchmark information, assuming we can trust it. But since the source is a uh, editor at um, an actual hardware publication, as well as um, I believe that they have had reliable leaks in the past, I think this um, this is probably going to be uh, turning out to be pretty accurate. Now. Uh, the downside of this is the system. So the system is using a Ryzen 5, I believe it's a 3500 or maybe it's a 3600. Yeah, 3500X processor. So that's six core, six thread. That's not the strongest CPU. So make of that what you will. And I'm not quite sure why that was the system used here, but um, that is uh, what we have. So anyway, um, so like I said, we have some synthetic benchmarks. Let's take a look at those first. So the post seems to show a total graphics score of, um, I'm checking my notes, be sure I'm giving you the right number here, of 16,775. Uh, with the combined score of 12,704. Well, since the combined score, the CPU matters, and that's not the greatest CPU, it's probably not that useful information for us. However, um, this is interesting in the GPU side, because while this um, leak is not presenting us with a comparable score from NVIDIA cards, we can still gather that by looking at reviews of a 3070. So a 3070, uh, for example, in the video cards article, I'll link in the description here, they mention that um, from Guru3D, they tested an MS MSI RTX 37 Gaming X Trio in this test, and it scored a 14,159 on the GPU score, uh, which would make this um, leaked 6800. And to be clear, this is the 6800, not the XT, not the 6900 XT. So this is the lowest model Big Navi card. That's going to be one of the three uh, that they've, uh, la they're launching right now, right? It's the most cut down version of that Big Navi GPU uh, coming in at $579. Um, well, that's showing it at 18% faster in the synthetic benchmark than the 3070. And that's really interesting because this uses ray tracing. Because um, in the uh, benchmarks that we saw from the uh, Big Navi reveal, uh, again, from AMD, so they're going to be cherry picked and all of that and the games and everything. Yes, I acknowledge that, but we're going off the information we have right now, guys. Anyway, um, in those, it's uh, the. Uh, the 6800 had a big advantage over the 3070. And the advantage, I believe, was somewhere in this 
18-ish percent range, and it also uh, costs 16% more than a 3070, so that is something to take into consideration. But the big thing everybody was bringing up is, yeah, but if ray tracing is required, it's probably going to drop down to 3070 levels or below and not have that like 18 to 20% advantage. Well, that's not what this leaked synthetic benchmark is showing us. Now, again, this is a leak, it might be wrong, but this is the most solid looking evidence that we have right now to go off of, to my knowledge. Um, oh, also mentioned in the Guru 3D uh, review is that the reference 3070, right? The reference 3070 wasn't as fast as that MSI RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio. It was actually, uh, the, in, in the score um, here for the 6800 is 22% faster than the 3070 Founders Edition. So that is very interesting. All right, now let's take a look at the gaming performance. Now, uh, before we look at the actual numbers, let's, let's think about the game. So this is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider has ray tracing. It has ray traced shadows, but it's one of the earliest or maybe even the earliest game that implemented ray tracing. And it's, I, I would not consider it the greatest ray tracing benchmark available, but it's an actual game with ray tracing. And because it sports DXR, the um, DirectX uh, ray tracing um, feature, that means that the AMD card is compatible with that ray tracing. And let's take a look at the numbers. We're seeing frame rates that are better than a 3070, as long as the 3070 does not have DLSS turned on. Once DLSS is turned on, it's a lot, uh, it's, well, it's a different story. The 3070 and the 2080 Ti do take the lead once ray tracing is, in, uh, sorry, not once ray tracing is enabled, once DLSS is enabled. Now, that's interesting and not unexpected. Now, that brings up the point of DLSS. So that's the other big elephant in the room. We'll talk about that for just a second here. Um, so AMD does not currently have an actual competitor to DLSS. And in their Fidelity FX package, they do have a competitor coming, but um, it doesn't look like it's actually ready right now. So once that's available, we'll be able to compare, first of all, is the quality any good? Because who cares if it upsamples it and gives you good frame rates if it looks bad, right? And for me, that was the case with DLSS 1.0. I hated it honestly. And I believe that's the version that's implemented in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, unless it got updated to 2.0. I haven't played that game in a long time. I don't know. Maybe you can let me know in the comments. But the point is that DLSS, um, when it's done well, and not like the 2.0 version, like when, when I played Control, it was really impressive. It looks almost like the native resolution, but renders it at a lower resolution using artificial intelligence to fill in the gaps and did a really good job. But other games I've played, for example, I was playing Monster Hunter World recently. It has DLSS, I'm pretty sure it's 1.0 because as soon as I turned that thing on, sure, my frame rate went up, but it, my screen looked like a blurry mess and I turned it right back off. So that's the question. Is, is AMD's version of DLSS obviously called something different? Um, it's what is it? The uh, I'll, I'll, I'll link it up here. I, I forget the name. It's like super sampling, super, res, super resolution. I don't know. Anyway, the point is... Um, that's not available quite yet from what we've seen. So it'll be interesting to see if that actually has a closer, uh, is a co closer competitor to DLSS than we might've thought it would be. Because um, this, these ray tracing numbers are better than I was expecting. I was expecting the 6800 to probably meet or fall short of the 3070 as soon as you turned ray tracing on. And I think a lot of people were expecting that because this is AMD's first implementation of it. But that isn't what these benchmarks have shown. It has a lead in, as long as DLSS is not factored into the situation. And that's very interesting to me. Now, we haven't seen if the 6800 XT and the 6900 XT are going to scale similarly. So we can't see how they're going to stack up against the 
um, 3080 and the 3090 once ray tracing is enabled. I would expect them to fall behind those cards, but these initial leaks are looking more promising than I think a lot of people were expecting. And I've got to say, if AMD is able to pull off a even close competitor to NVIDIA in ray tracing and something like DLSS, and they beat them in rasterized performance, especially at 1440p, again, take a look at my last video, um, I mean, most people are gaming at 1080 or 1440. 4K gaming, I know some of you guys watching this might be like, I've been gaming at 4K. Yeah, you are the minority, okay? I mean, I'm the weird minority with an ultra wide 1440, okay? Like, I get being in the minority on what resolution you're running here, but like, um, 1440 and 1080 are, are where actually most people are gaming, right? So so it's it's very interesting. This is really interesting to me. Anyway, um, thank you guys for taking a look at the video. I'll link the uh, information in the description. Feel free to take a look at it yourself. And I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this in the comments. Is this convincing enough evidence? We really do need some independent reviews, right? And if you made it to the end of the video here, consider hitting like and subscribe. That'd help my channel grow. Like I said, I've only been doing this about a month or so. And thank you to everybody who already has. Hope you have an excellent day.